How familiar are you with the Hebrew Israelites' beliefs? Well, I'm very familiar because I am one. So, Okay, so let me test you. What do they believe about Jesus? That his name is in Jesus is Yeshua. And in English, we say Jesus. Right. So it doesn't really matter how you pronounce the name. All that matters is who Jesus is. Would you agree with that? I don't. Jesus died on the cross, right? I don't believe it was a cross. I believe he was hung. I, I'm, I'm more so, like, my belief is things like I don't celebrate Christmas. Do you celebrate Christmas? Yes, I do. You believe that's his birthday? No, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we're celebrating what Jesus did, his birth, his death, and his resurrection. That's what we're celebrating when we celebrate Christmas, Jesus coming in the flesh, the God-man coming in the flesh. You don't believe Jesus is God, do you? No. Well, no. So Jesus identified himself as ego I, me, as God in human flesh. As God? As God, absolutely. That's some great knowledge. Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And um, pretty much all the questions that that Edomite um, Christian ex, you know, that um, Israelite, pretty much going to answer all them questions, you know, with the scriptures and a little research. All right. Because, um, see, this is what people don't understand. And this is the narrative that the Edomites and the, the heathens is going to try and use against us. All right. Now, when it comes down to Jacob's trouble, when it comes down to the persecution that's going to happen during Jacob's trouble, as well as his global economic collapse, they're pretty much going to group all Israelites, regardless of our differences, together, all right? And they're trying to paint the narrative that, you know, we're extremists, you know, we're like like radical Christians or whatever. You know, that's the narrative that they say. We're not Christians in the sense of the man-made religion that comes from the Roman Catholic Church, all right? When you read about the Christians in the New Testament, the real word for Christian in the Hebrew is the Hamashiachim, because it was multiple followers of the Messiah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, which his true name is Yehabashah. And we read Acts, the 11th chapter, as well as Acts 13 and 1, you know, the, the Israelites were, um, they, they were, um, they were dwelling in um, Antioch, excuse me, kind of lost my train of thought. All right. But it has the word Niger there, which, you know, in the Latin, it pretty much just means um, black. All right. Because the so-called black man. Right. Whether he be an African-American, you know, um, a West Indian slash Caribbean man or a Haitian. You know, he's a Jew because the Jews during the Roman Empire, we was known as the Southern Kingdom. All right. And then the other tribes, they were known as the Northern Kingdom, all right, which are the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians. Yes, those are our brothers, all right, our brothers and sisters. And when you do your research and you study the Israelites that fled Roman persecution and they fled into the interiors of Africa, west, east, south, and west, and that, that land was known as what? Negro land, whether it be west or east. Them Bantu, Niger, Igbo speaking tribes, all right, in Africa, the Israelites. And they was rehearsing what the so-called white man called Judaism, which is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of their abilities in Africa. So there's a difference between the Israelites and our customs and our religious beliefs and the heathen Hamites that dwelt in Africa. Two different sea lines, all right? Now... The northern kingdom on the other side of the world, when you read 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, verses 40 through 46, the different Indian and Hispanic speaking tribes, they were speaking Hebrew, all right? They was rehearsing the righteous acts of the Heavenly Father by keeping the law, statutes, and commandments on the other side of the world. This is why when you read St. John 10 and 16, what did Yahabashai say? He said, I had sheep, which is not of this fold. Because the predominant tribes back then, who the Lord was sent to first, was who? The Jews, all right? The southern kingdom. 
Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So you could see the correlation and the connection between the Israelites that fled into Africa, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of their abilities, and the, the Indian tribes, all right, that was on the other side of the world, known as Ashereth, which Ashereth is the Americas. This is what Columbus identified as Ashereth, the Americas, all right? And now, in these last days, Jeremiah 15 and 33, the children of Judah and Israel is oppressed together. So all 12 tribes of the nation of Israel is being oppressed together here in Babylon the Great, which Babylon the Great is ran by who? The Edomites, the so-called white man in his sea line, all right? So what you Israelites need to understand, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, is that not every Hebrew Israelite group is the same, all right? Whether it be a camp or individuals that teach alone, you need to understand that not every Israelite camp or a person that confesses that they're an Israelite have the same belief systems, all right? You got Israelites that speak Yiddish and they think that that's Hebrew. They're using Yiddish vowel points and, you know, Yiddish language to try and call upon the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. But Yehoshua and Yahshua and, you know, Yahuwah, all them false names, that's not the name of the Heavenly Father or his son. Why? Because it's not in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew language. All right. So we're going to get into the lesson and just understand that the camp that you should be following is Great Millstone, known as GMS. All right. You should be following us. So now concerning Yiddish and names like Yehoshua, you know, Yahshua. Adonai, all these false names, all right, because people is under the impression that what? That you could call the Heavenly Father and His Son whatever you want to call them, right? So when you look at the Yiddish, when you compare that to the ancient Paleo Hebrew, there's no E's, there's no O's, there's no U's, and there's no V's. The only two vowels in the Paleo Hebrew is the A or the I and the I sound, all right? So check this out. I Google no vowels in Paleo Hebrew. It says in its earliest phases around the 10th century BCE, there weren't any vowels in the Hebrew. All right. So this this modern Yiddish Hebrew that people speak is not the authentic or the original speaking Hebrew. All right. It says um, the word for con Consonantals, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but you see how I spelled their alphabets that begin with the equivalent um, letters, right? Yep, and check this out. It says, um, since Hebrew is one of the most ancient languages still spoken around the world, which people is not speaking the ancient Paleo Hebrew, they're speaking Yiddish. Yiddish is not Hebrew, all right? The vowel system was never a part of the Hebrew alphabet. So this Yiddish, it has a vowel system that was created by the Masorites, which are Edomites. All right. And as you can see here, right, it says what? The Masorites were a small pocket of scribes, a.k.a. Edomites, working at Tiberius, who developed a meticulous counting system for copying scripture. And see, this is the thing. A lot of the mistranslations or words that's inserted in the Bible that shouldn't be there is because of these Masorites, is because of these Edomites, all right? It says, they added vowels and punctuation to the Aramaic Hebrew script of the first century AD as seen in the dots and dashes in modern Hebrew. So modern Hebrew is not Paleo-Hebrew. The name of the Heavenly Father, as well as His only begotten Son, it's only found in this alphabet that you see right here, the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, all right? So names like Yehoshua, names like Yahuwah, anything with a, a E-O-U-V in it, that's not the name of the Heavenly Father or His only begotten Son, all right? The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahabashai, all right? So now, let's go into the scripture, because this is a commandment. To use the name Yahabashai. You know, when you read Matthew the third chapter as well as Matthew the seventeenth chapter, you know, the Heavenly Father appears. All right. And concerning the transfiguration in Matthew the seventeenth chapter, the Heavenly Father Yahweh said, What? This is my beloved son, Yahabashai. 
hear ye him. Meaning what? We're supposed to reverence and worship Yahweh Shah. Without Yahweh Shah's blood and sacrifice, we wouldn't even be a nation of people. The Heavenly Father would have rejected us without the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh Shah. All right? So Yahweh Shah's name is to be praised and worshiped in the earth. First beginning with who? The elect of the nation of Israel. Because that's what's prophesied in the scripture. All right? So you got individuals talk about, oh, well, the same person that you're referring to, I'm referring to that person. It's just that I use this name and you use that name. But we're talking about the same people. No, the fuck, we're not talking about the same people. Because with a name, it comes an image or how somebody looks. And with a name, it comes with what? A doctrine, a gospel, a belief system. All right? So 1 John 3 and 23, it says, And this is his commandment. What's a commandment? A divine rule from the heavenly father, Yahweh, as well as Yahweh Shai. Right? It says that we, the nation of Israel, but more importantly, the elect of the nation of Israel, because all Israel is not going to be saved. Only the elect of the nation of Israel is going to be delivered. All right? That we should believe on the name. It didn't say names with an S. It said name of his son. Now the word Jesus is there, right? Now when you click on this word Jesus, right? Which, by the way, the letter J, it was invented in uh, 1524. All right? Now, when you read the old King James 1611 versions, the word Jesus or the J, the letter J is not even in that Bible. All right. You got to understand that the Bibles that we're using today are revised King James versions. It's not the original Bible that had the Apocrypha in it because the Apocrypha is a part of the Old Testament. All right. So when you go into this word Jesus, you have to go into what? The Hebrew origin. There you go. Strong's H3091. So whenever you see the word Jesus, right? Strong's G2424, their Hebrew origin, the correct name for Yahabashai, right? Or who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ is what? Strong's H3091, which the word there is Yahabashai, all right? Because when you look at the Hebrew characters and you compare it, to the ancient paleo hebrew it's easy to look at the lashwan kodash you know the paleo hebrew alphabet and get the name yahabashai out of this all right not your hoshua not any other name not your shia not any other name the one and only true name of the heavenly father's only begotten son meaning the only spirit cre um, created directly from the heavenly father all right, his name is Yahabashai. All right, that's very important to know for salvation purposes, you know, who to pray to, right? You don't want to give reverence and praise to a graven image or another God. With, an, with another God or gods, it comes with a name. So names are important, all right? Yahweh, once again, is the name of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son, Yahabashai. That's, that's his true name, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, all right? So it's a commandment that what? That we should believe on the name of his son, Yahabashah Hamashiach, and love one another as he gave us commandment. All right? So this is very important. This is a commandment to use the name Yahabah and Yahabashah. All right? St. John 7 and 38. Because, see, when you're arguing with these Christians, you know, they come in with a different name. They come in with a different gospel other than what's mentioned in the scriptures. They're coming with a different doctrine and gospel other than what the 12 disciples came with. The 12 disciples taught in the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai and the Holy Spirit. All right. Um, John 7 and 38. It says, he that believeth on me as the scripture have said. And that's the key thing. Christians don't believe according to the scripture. All right. Roman Catholics and the different Christian denominations, they don't believe according to the scripture. All right. They believe according to man's tradition. It says he that believeth for me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly, meaning his mind, because they have a, a slogan. They have a phrase fool for thought. You got to digest this word. Right. So your mind is like a belly. It says out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So this this word, it quickens you. All right. It's living water because all these other doctrines, all these other philosophies, Christianity, 
the name of um, God, Jesus, right? That's that's not living water, all right? That's that's stale and defiled water. The living water comes with what? The true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, the correct gospel and doctrine to follow, which makes you what? Wise unto salvation. So the truth does matter for truth's sake because you have to believe according to the scripture, all right? So you got a lot of false prophets out here, even guys that say that they're Israelites. Every Hebrew Israelite camp is not the same. All right. Zephaniah 3 and 9, end time prophecy. It says, for then will I turn to the people, what people? The nation of Israel. Because when you read Jeremiah 17 and 4, as well as the book of 2 Thessalonians, it said what? We was going to discontinue from my heritage, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, our identity, who we are. And that also involves what? The name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right? The scripture said that there was going to be a great falling away first. All right? So now in these last days, in the land of our captivities, we're remembering ourselves and what? Thinking upon the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right? Zephaniah 3 and verse 9, KJV. For then will I turn to the people a pure language. What's the pure language? The Lashwan Kodash. All right? And out of this language or this alphabet, this is where you will find the true name of the Lord, all right, which is Yahweh, the true name of the Heavenly Father, all right, and the true name of the Messiah is who? Yahweh Shai, all right? So now jumping back. So that's the pure language. <clears throat> Yiddish is not the pure language, all right? <clears throat> so it says, for then will I turn to the people a pure language. So we do have the Hebrew today. It says that they, the elect of the nation of Israel, because part of this great awakening for the elect of the nation of Israel is that what? We would think upon and call upon and pray to the heavenly father's name through his only begotten son's name, through the Holy Spirit. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Kodash. All right. So it says that they may all call upon the name of the Lord. It didn't say names. All right, the name of the Lord, and then the word Lord is in caps, so let's talk about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, all right, to serve him with one consent, all right, so even when Babylon the Great, which is America, is destroyed, what names are going to be exalted, Yahweh first, and Yahweh Shah after, all right, see, when you teach the correct gospel and doctrine, we come in, in the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, all right, this is 2nd Ezra 2 and 47. It says, So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God whom they have confessed in the world. So the elect of the nation of Israel will be confessing Yehabashai. We will be teaching the nation of Israel what, the, what his blood and sacrifice means for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect, all right, as well as the true understanding of the new covenant that's taught here at Great Millstone, all right? So it says, then begin I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. So Christians don't stand stiffly for the name of the Lord. All right. If you're using y the Yiddish alphabet to call upon the name of the Lord, you're not calling upon the name of the Heavenly Father or his son. All right. You're not praying to the Heavenly Father or his son. If you're not using the names Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right. See, this is already written, and this is a future prophecy. The ones that's going to be delivered here in Babylon the Great and all over the world, they would be believing on Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Not another gospel, not another doctrine, and not no other God. All right? Let's go to the next one. This is 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. It says, hold on, let me put the strongs off here. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. It says, for if... He that cometh, right, referring to a man that's a prophet, right? It says, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, right, or another Yahweh Shai, because like I said, Strong G 2424, the Hebrew origin of that word Jesus is what? Yahweh Shai, Strong's H3091, all right? Yahweh Shai, right? So it says, whom we have not preached. So the apostles of Great Millstone, even before them, Abba Bivens, all right, um, L.D. Yaquab, you know, um, High Priest Ariyah, who else, King Mashah, you know, the Apostles of Great Millstone, 
They didn't break down the name of the Lord and his son in Yiddish. All right. So it says, whom, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit. So with a name, it comes another spirit. When you read Acts, the fourth chapter, the first 12 verses, right? The disciples taught in the name of Yehabashah. Yehabah Bahashim Yehabashah. Bahashim Rechachodash. All right? They wasn't teaching in the name Jesus or God or Most High or Christ Blessed or in the name of Yahuwah and Yahshua, Yahshua, or Ahiah and Yeshaya. They wasn't teaching in that shit. All right? And I got to talk like that because, you know, a lot of you Israelites, you just so damn ignorant. All right? So it says, if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with them. So we're supposed to avoid individuals like that. All right. If you're not coming in the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, then automatically you a false prophet. At least you repent as an Israelite and teaching the correct names. All right. This ain't up for debate. This is 1 John 2 and 18. Yeah, 1 John 2 and 18. It says, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist, which an uh, Antichrist is just a non-believer or a false prophet. All right. It's not just one Antichrist. There's multiple Antichrists. Your parents that's unbelievers are Antichrist. Uh, Israelite not teaching the correct doctrine is an Antichrist. All right. So it says, let's go into the word Antichrist. See what it means. Strong's G500. Antechritas. Antechritas. What does that say? The adversary of the Messiah. All right. So an anti-Messiah spirit. Somebody that comes in another doctrine, another gospel, and other names, other than what's mentioned in the scriptures, shall come. Even now, there are many antichrists. So there's more than one antichrist. All right? Christians are antichrists. All Christian denominations are antichrists. People that believe in the Islamic religion, that call themselves Muslim, they're antichrists. Any philosophy outside of the scriptures, they're antichrists if they believe in it. Even if they're an atheist, they're an antichrist. All right. Just to give you examples, the Roman Catholic Church, the biggest antichrist. Right. You even got Israelite camps that are antichrist. So it says whereby we know that it is the last time because this is end time prophecy. There will be a lot of false prophets, be a lot of scoffers and mockers in the last days. Right. Guys that form their own doctrines. When they form their own doctrines, they're coming in a name other than Yahweh and Yahweh So it says they went out from us, but they were not of us, right? So you got guys that come into the truth, they go back into the world, and they follow the philosophies and ways of the heathen. They form their own doctrines, right? They try to build upon another man's foundation. They're going to be destroyed for that. It says, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Right. And even if you get kicked out the camp, you know, whatever the hell your situation is, teach the correct gospel and doctrine that you learn from the apostles of Great Millstone. You being offended doesn't change what the truth is. All right. But they went out and give double honors. It says, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. All right. So there you go. Let's go to the next one. Acts 5 and 29, it says, matter of fact, I start at 28 concerning the Sanhedrin, right? Acts 5 and 28 saying, did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in that name? So even back during the Roman Empire, the uh, wicked scribes, wicked Pharisees, because not all Pharisees was wicked. Gamaliel was a righteous Pharisee. All right. You have Pharisees that secretly believed on Yahweh Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Paul was a Pharisee, right? It says, right? It says, saying that, saying, did not we strictly command you not to teach in the name? So you had the Sadducees, they were just completely wicked. They didn't even, they didn't even believe in a resurrection. They didn't even believe in an afterlife. And they put the prophets over Yahweh. They put Moses and Abraham over Yahweh, which that's why earlier I quoted the transfiguration in Matthew 17. Yahweh is above the prophets and the law. Yahweh is above Moses and Abraham. All right. So it says, saying, did not we, Acts 5 28, saying, did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in his name? So 
These wicked men that denied Yahabashah and his miracles, calling him the devil, right? These men, they was more concerned about their position over Israel and selling out to the Roman Empire other than worshiping Yahabashah, all right? So you got these same men back today saying that the name of Yahabashah is just a title. That's what IUIC teaches. That's why the Mosai, he's going to destroy the leadership. You know, at least they repent, but... They just keep getting worse and worse, all right? They keep on getting exposed, and eventually, judgment has to come down, all right? The Lord is not a respecter of persons. So it says, yep, it says, And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man blood upon us. So these men was more afraid of the Romans, the Roman Edomites, all right, than worshiping Yahweh Shai. And they was mad at the disciples for that, all right? But the disciples, they still kept on teaching in the name of the Lord. It says, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey the Most High rather than men. Because the Most High gave us a commandment. Yahweh gave us a commandment to call and pray upon and to think upon the name of Yahweh, the true name of the God of Israel, and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, the God of our fathers, which is Yahweh, it says, raised up Yahweh Shai. Right, whom ye slew and hang on a tree, because that's how the Romans would um crucify people. All right, they'll cut a tree in the shape of a cross and crucify people like that. Right, so called capital punishment. It says, Yep, on um, verse 31, him Yahabashai have the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel, and forgiveness of sins. So the blood and sacrifice of Yahabashai. It does not pertain to the heathen nations. When you read Galatians, the second chapter, it tells you what? That he came to redeem them that was under the law. So who broke the law, statutes, and commandments? Who was given the law, statutes, and commandments? The Israelites, all right? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. So we got to a point where the Heavenly Father, he stopped accepting our sacrifices because Israelites had premeditated sins, all right? So it says in John three sixteen that what? The Most High, he so loved the world, the world of Israel. Going back to the Greek word cosmos for the world, Israel. All right. So it says, um, yep. So that's that's the point. All right. That's that's the point. So Christians, they got it wrong. The Messiah, he didn't die for all nations. The nation that needed a savior is who? The nation of Israel. All right. NLT version, I'm going to finish it off with this, Colossians, the first chapter, NLT version. It says, matter of fact, yeah, Colossians 1 and 12, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people, his people is the Israelites, who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our Right. The nation of Israel who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. That's through the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. All right. It says Hamashiach is the visible image of the invisible power because the heavenly father is perfect. And Yahweh Shai was perfect when he was in the flesh 2000 plus years ago. All right. It says he existed referring to Yahweh Shai. He existed before anything was created. This is why he's the only begotten son. And is supreme over all creation. All right. So he is to be worshipped in his name, Yahabashai. For through him, the Most High created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. So all the different realms you can think of, all creation is created by Yahabashai. All right. Through the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, like the spiritual realm such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him, Yahabashai, and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Hamashiach is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. So it would be out of order for you to be carnal and think that you're going to take the Edomites and the heathen down by yourself. No, vengeance is mine, save the Lord, like how it says in the scriptures. All right, you read Zephaniah 3 and 8. We have to wait upon Yahweh Shah to rise up to the prey. 
Yahweh got to get his lick back first, and then we're going to get our lick back through him. All right? So it says, for the Most High, right? For the Most High in all his fullness was pleased to live in Hamashiach, and through him, the Most High reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything, right? Because to be reconciled, it means to be brought, um, brought back in good graces with the Most High. And that's through the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh. All right? So through Yahweh's blood, we're under a grace period because we can't keep the law perfectly. So it says, He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by the means of Hamashiach blood on the cross. All right? So um, let me see. Should I read some more? Yes, yeah, keep going. It says, this includes you who were once far away from the Most High, because we all were living like Gentiles and in a Gentile state of mind. So the Heavenly Father through His Son woke us up to this truth or called us into this truth. Lord willing, we endure to the end. It says, you were His enemies separated, right? Because the scriptures tell you what? It's uh, friendship with the world is enmity with the Most High. So we all was once in the world. So now we're saying what? You were his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Hamashiach in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. All right. And that's only through your Our righteousness is as filthy rags. So you don't want to ever get prideful. All right. This doctrine that we teach that comes with the Heavenly Father's name and His Son's name, this is His doctrine, all right? So we got to teach it correctly. It says, but you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news, a.k.a. the gospel. The good news has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as the Most High Servant to proclaim it, all right? Which trickles on down to the other prophets So you know, that's pretty much it Christians don't have the truth The Roman Catholic Church don't have this truth Alright And this truth is only meant for the elect of the nation of Israel To obtain Lord willing you was edified Shalom